Hello, all you heartbeats out there. I am getting ready to start a new video, a new project. And I wanted to outline this. This is my project. It's an octopus. And I want to um, outline this guy in ink. And so I found myself out at the art supply store. Imagine that. Um, always need an excuse to go out there. So I was looking for actually fountain pen just to experiment with. And normally in these projects that um, I outline in ink, my watercolor and ink paintings, I've always done the Pigma Micron and I use the number eight for the most part. But sometimes on the watercolor paper that's a little bit rough and Cold press isn't particularly rough, but this tends to feel like it's dry and it doesn't really flow over that. It would be better on a hot press paper because that's super smooth. So in my uh, thinking, I was thinking maybe a fountain pen would work better. Maybe it would flow better on the paper. But the ones that were at Blick weren't what I was looking for. One was too expensive behind the counter and the other was just a regular old fountain pen that I just didn't feel like it was going to work for what I was wanting to use it for. So I was asking the associate there, always a good thing to do because they have a lot of knowledge um, for ideas. And he came up with the mixed media paint markers by D Dollar, Daler, 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 Daler Rowney. And this one's empty. I haven't put any ink into it. This one's filled with acrylic, liquid acrylic uh, indigo. I was fascinated by these because I have a ton of ink. This, here's just one of the other ones. I've got indigo. This is a little pyrrole red I used for a painting at one time, but they're just kind of sitting around in my studio. And I thought, well, that would be fun. Maybe this would be a good way to outline my work and a uh, good thing about the acrylic artist ink is when it dries it doesn't move around so you can paint your watercolor right over the top of it and it's not going to smudge and smear if you've let it dry completely so um, I filled this one with indigo like I said and these little pins they come in packs of two like this I don't remember if there are packs of more than two, but they have a S or an M. I didn't see an L. Small, medium, I guess is probably what that stands for. And you can also buy uh, packs of nibs in different sizes. This came with a, a cardboard hanger, and it also has this S on it. So you want to make sure if you're buying nibs separate from your markers that you match up the letters. So that's very important so that they actually actually interchange. So this one is a one mil and it comes with a couple of extra tips. If you can see that, this is a 0.8, which is the same size as my marker there. And pull that top off and it comes, see it? next to this it comes in with that already but i have to tell you what i did when i first got these home and opened the package i proceeded to unscrew it and take that whole top off not realizing that this came off so easily i proceeded to shake it and these little beads in here that are meant to mix up the paint inside the marker before you start using it flew and I only found one. So one of these days, I'm going to step on the other one and figure out where it went. Anyway, the purpose of that coming off is so you can fill your uh, pen. Now, these inks make it very easy because they come with a dropper. I'm not going to do it because this one's already full, but it just you just drop it right into the pen. So that's very handy thing to note. So when you put it back in there, oh, and here I want to show you this too. So these little nibs, I'll pull out the, this is a round. I don't remember what size, but it's a round. You just pull this little top right off and you can pop that in. 
I believe that's how it works. Screw that back on. And then you've got the soft, the soft round. And then you prime it, so you're gonna wanna pump it until the ink comes up and fills in that um, guy. So that came out pretty easy. Stick that in there and that back on there. So when you shake it, make sure you have this over cap on so you don't get ink everywhere <laughs> or lose your uh, little, lose your marbles. <laughs> I've lost my marbles a long time ago. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry, no more joking around. Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside. So you see what I'm using to outline my octopus. Ollie the octopus. All right, so he's on the other side here. Let's flip him over. And what I've done, as I've done in other videos, is I've printed off a picture. Um, I got this image from Pixabay, which you can get uh, photos or media for free that you're free to use in your social media and projects and such. So he was on Pixabay. I just typed in octopus and this is a whole bunch of images came up, but I liked him. So I'm going to go with this guy and we're going to start outlining him with indigo acrylic ink in the Daler Rowney mixed media paint marker. So I've already shook this up and I want to make sure that I've got it primed where the ink is going to come out and flow smoothly over my paper. Um, one of the reasons I like to ink my, my work before I paint is because then you've kind of um, gotten away from that blank piece of white paper. It's kind of a freeing little thing to do because sometimes the white of the paper causes a great hesitation in me, I know it does. Um, so when I do the marker on it, I've all of a sudden ruined the white of the paper, so-called. Not really ruining it, but it's now um, not so scary. So I like to do that. I like to do that when I'm plein air painting. It's kind of a fun, fun way to plein air paint. I'll draw a little drawing out on my paper and then I'll fill it, uh, outline my drawing with ink and then proceed to paint. So that's a, that's a fun way to do that. I need a little bit more priming on that. Pump that marker and just continue to outline my octopus. Okay, um, so we're gonna make sure that that's nice and dry before starting the painting. So um, yeah, let's let that dry. Okay, so um, this is dry, plenty dry, and I am going to start with a number eight Princeton Velvet Touch. Um, got a nice point on it. It's a good size for filling in. I'm going to do the octopus first, and I thought what I would use, I'm going to kind of try to stick to the same general coloring. I might uh, bump up the lavender color a bit by throwing in some opera rose by Windsor and Newton, but for the most part, I'm gonna use Sodalite, and that's a Prima Tech color by Daniel Smith. I swatched out a little tiny bit of that with lavender and cerulean blue. So I kinda of liked that comb combination. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple if I can. Sometimes I say that and uh, it doesn't always turn out to be as simple as I thought it was going to be in the beginning, but I do like the combination there. So I'm going to mix up a bigger puddle of that. Uh, I'm going to be needing more lavender soon. That must mean I need to go again to the art supply store. Sodalite is right here, and that's um, 
Reminds me a lot of neutral tint, so I'll add that. And then I've got my little petal of cerulean blue right there. Here's my opera, very bright. I might just tone it down a smidge with my lavender so it's not quite so bright when I put it on there. And then I also want to have ready to go some burnt sienna because I do want to uh, add his little speckles and that seems like a nice good color for that. Okay, so let's get started. I think what I'll do to begin rinsing my brush is get some moisture on my paper and I'm not going to get the whole thing wet at this point. I think that I'll just kind of move along and carefully paint in. So I'm just going to start with this head, get that wet, and then I'm going to drop in color. Just vary it up keeping it a little bit on the lighter side. That got a little bit more thick than I want, so all I do is add some water to my brush and spread it out. And that's just the way I'm gonna move along. So if you can see here, I've uh, let some of the white of the paper stay white, and that's important because he does have some whitish areas. A little more lavender maybe. And the pink. I do like that. And then spreading it out with some water. A little more cerulean in here. And I'm going to drop some lavender in there with that opera pink or opera rose, excuse me. And It's a little too soda lighty, so I'm going to get a little bit more lavender. I don't want to get too dark here because my background is going to be dark, so I want to lift out a little bit of that color. And I'm going to get a little uh, lavender with the cerulean. more cerulean than the lavender, so it's a little more purple. I don't know why, I just want them to be a little purpley. I just think uh, purple gray is kind of fun. And just I'm just speckling. There's gonna be some granulating happening when this dries and settles. And I'm just gonna add a couple of little specks of very tip of my brush and some of the areas that are more a little bit more diluted on the paper so just tip 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 of my brush specking that in and this uh burnt sienna mix is just a little bit more uh it's got a little bit more pigment so when i put it into here it's not diluting and spreading so that's important to note drying my brush, rinsing my brush, and I've got some titanium white. And I'm just going to speck that in. You're not going to be able to see that too much, but I want some of the paint to kind of push away. And that titanium white is going to help me do that. So right along the edge of his beak, I guess they call those. Do they call them beaks? Octopus beak. All right, I, I'm liking where this is heading, so I'm going to leave that for the most part. I think I'll lighten this little blue area up. I don't really want to come back into this, so the goal here is to... Look how that's separating on that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's really cool. <laughs> 
I'm going to come right um, down here underneath and just darken that with the sodalite and lavender, mostly sodalite in that. And touch in some blue and maybe a little burnt sienna. Mm, maybe not. There's some green, maybe that'll work with the. I know what'll work. I'm gonna put in some ultramarine deep right in there. That's gonna start my shadow. So I think I'll do that right in here too. Start defining that edge. And then add some of the lavender mix. We're gonna just make that shadow. We're gonna just make that shadow. I don't want to get too close here because that's still wet. So I'm just going to avoid that. And I've got my ultramarine blue and I'm putting neutral tint into that. And you can see that's a fairly thick mixture. So I'm just going to come right, right here and start my shadow. And darken that up a bit. nice about these brushes this uh, velvet touch the, they've got a nice full body they hold a lot of paint and water but you can also come up and do some tiny fine lines with the tip of it because if it's got a nice tip on it okay so I'm gonna let that dry and come back and actually before I do I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of that that's bled in and I do that by dry, uh, rinsing my brush of all the color dabbing off a lot of the moisture and then just uh, dragging my brush through that paint that's still wet okay now we're gonna let that dry okay this is dry and I decided to mix up some of the soda light into the cerulean um I feel feel like I had more of that in this, and now that this is dry, I can see that I really like the separation that's happening between actually even the lavender, because I put all three of those colors on here. I like that, so that's what I'm going to continue into the body with. Sticking with the same brush, starting again with water and I'm avoiding this little area because it's a lighter I don't know what that's called um I'll have to look that up some little breathing apparatus I don't know if that's how, how they get their oxygen okay so I'm going to start with that and start with the darker areas and I'm just lightly brushing in where some of that dark is. And I'm leaving some areas of white because um, I like the, the way that looks, real loose and watercolory. So I'm gonna add a little bit of some pinks in here. I do like that and that'll keep it um, looking like it's the same animal or mammal, is it a mammal? animal and some of this lavender more of the blue I like how he kind of looks mottled and in here is going to be a little bit darker I'll go back to the ultramarine 
just right in here, ultramarine and the sodalite. The ultramarine blue deep is what I'm using there, and that's a Holbein color. I don't know, there's a lot of ultramarine blues out there, but I don't know of any besides um, Holbein that has the ultramarine deep. And I do like it because it just has that deeper value. So I'm gonna add that little shadow area. And I wanna kind of soften that out with some water so it's not such a hard edge. And I wanna add a little bit of pink in between those tentacles. Pink in here, just kind of play with that. I'm going to go with some of the cerulean in here and just swoosh that in, give it some movement. So a little dry brushing there. I'm going to go very light diluted mix of that soda light and cerulean in there for underneath his ten his arm and a little bit dark under here so we're creating form we're trying to get a two-dimensional surface to look three-dimensional i think i'll add a little bit of that that's um Ooh, I like that. That is core burnt orange, quinactridone burnt orange. I do like that. Add it into there. I think I'll put a little in there, dry stroke. And my brush is pretty dry. This is not a real wet uh, paint application here. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Paints are drying out. So I want to make sure to moisten those by spritzing them. So I'm just going to get more thicker mixture of that soda light and ultramarine deep and just Touch that in so it's still wet. Underneath here is like some rock. And then this is a little bit more of that tentacle, the arm. And add a little bit more of that. Ooh, I like that. That burnt orange just real lightly in there with the cerulean blue. That's nice. That's a nice little touch. It's a very strong color, so I'm not needing very much of it. So I'm just stroke in a little bit of it up here. Ooh, I like that. Like it. And up in here. And I think a little with that burnt sienna might be kind of nice up in here, maybe not that much, a little bit more diluted. This is dry, so I don't, I need to think about that. It's not going to spread around as much, so it doesn't have to be as thick of a mixture. Just here and there. Basically, I've only used what one, two, three, four, five, six colors to create the octopus so far, and I think this is um, probably a good place to stop and analyze and think what's going on here. This is going to be dark, 
So I'll just kind of start that now. It's those rocks that are underneath him. I've got some manganese blue. I think I'll pop in a little bit of that along here. That's pretty. So now we've got seven colors. You don't need a whole lot of color, so I, I have a tendency to get a little carried away sometimes with color. I might be a little bit obsessed. And I'm just kind of indicating a little shadow underneath him. Spread that out a little bit with some water. And then really truly gonna let this dry. I just don't want any hard edges, so I brought in a little bit of mostly clear water to spread that around and let that soften. Okay, so this guy is gonna sit here and dry and then we'll come back and work on some of the um, contrasting areas. All right, I'm really liking the coloring in this. So now I wanna work on the background a bit. And um, the contrast or the uh, colors in here make me think of kind of a warm, warm-ish, um, more in the contrasting colors, like the oranges, really deep. So that's what I'm thinking. And I'm gonna go ahead and figure out which those colors are gonna be. And I think I'm gonna stick with um, my burnt orange here, the core. The core is, I don't know if I said this earlier or not, but the core burnt orange here is a bit redder than the Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith, that's very diluted, but Daniel Smith burnt orange is a lot more brown. So I like both of them, um, and I'll probably use both of them in this. So let's get some mixtures going with the two brands of Burnt Orange, Daniel Smith, which I barely have any, and I want to use a little bit of Thalo Blue, Daniel Smith Thalo Blue Green Shade. I think that'll be nice in there. That'll kind of cool down. Let's just add a little bit of the burnt orange to that and see what happens. Graze it down quite a bit, so I like that. I want to use a little bit more blue in that, but I don't want it quite as bright. So that works really well with that core. I didn't mention that. This is core burnt orange, and this is Daniel Smith burnt orange. So I mixed the phthalo blue green shade with the core burnt orange. I've got a little bit of phthalo green. Oh no, that's ultramarine turquoise. I like that too. Okay, and I also have a little bit of sun. Hopefully I can work around that little speckle of brightness there. We haven't seen the sun very much here in Portland lately, so looking forward to a couple of nice days after Memorial. All those poor campers out there got poured on this weekend. Um, and I think, let me see about putting a little bit of that burnt orange also into the green, and that's gonna be really nice. Or not green, turquoise. And a little bit more turquoise. Just get a little bit of variety going back in that, in those dark areas. And then 
Cobalt Teal Blue by Daniel Smith is nice as well. Okay, and what I'm going to do is start with my board upside down, and I'm just going to be working within some parameters, I think, initially, so I can establish um, those dark areas. So I'm going to go ahead and start on dry paper, and I don't think I mentioned this before. This is Arches 140 Cold Press, and... I like working on that. I kind of have tried other papers. I use Saunders Waterford here and there. I've tried some handmade. I really like the Twin Rocker handmade, although it's so precious that it's hard to get myself to paint on it, which is crazy, but that's what happens. So um, also I've used Hanamule, which I love. I love that paper. You can't really paint on the opposite side of it too much. So if you're just practicing and you want to use both sides, that's not a great paper to do that with. But I really do like the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and start with these blues. My phthalo blue green shade mixed with my core quinactardone orange. I need a little bit more of that out of my palette. I kind of contaminated my petal there, but that happens. So I want to start here deeper. We're going to be with the contrast of this. It's helping to pop this guy forward so starting with that i rinse my brush and then i get the extra moisture off so i don't keep adding water to my petal it's important to note because if your paintbrush is too dry when you're dipping back into that you're going to get a really dry puddle that's not loose and flowing around but if you put too much water into it just the opposite happens and you're going to get um your mixture is going to be too diluted so i just added a little touch of water there into that corner and i do want to kind of splatter and maybe spritz a little bit so that's not drying out on the edge so much before I can come back to it. So let's tip that around a smidge. Okay, and back to this guy. Oop, a little too much moisture on my brush. So I'm going to come back over here to the tentacle or the is that the tentacle or the arm? These are the, I don't know what that's called. The little arm of the octopus. I'm gonna come right back. Grabbing a little bit of the Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith, dipping into my phthalo blue petal. And I don't want to forget about Cobalt Teal Blue. And we're just going to spread that around a little bit. And work this up a little bit. Okay, now let's grab some Quinactridone gold deep by core that's a lot like burnt orange by daniel smith so i think what i'll do is get quinactridone gold itself and mix it into that i'm going to grab a little raw sienna which is kind of dry so it's got some crumbs in it i don't know if i want to use that let's go with a raw umber instead so 
So I want to be careful around this because it is still damp. But I'm just going to drag my brush kind of through that watery area there and bring some of that color up into this rock. And you can see I'm just kind of dropping in color. I'm gonna get, I'm working upside down, so this is a little bit tricky sometimes. I'm not really sure what I'm working on. <laughs> And a little bit of green in here. And again, I want to come along these edges so I don't have a hard edge and just bring it out a little bit. And I think I want to come a little bit dark over here. Yes. That's gonna, ooh, look at that spread. Ooh, I got a little too much on my brush. Look at how that paint just swishes into the water that's down on the paper. Okay. That's fun. And over here, in a minute is this little arm. So I'm going to come in with that Quinn Gold mixture and raw umber. And again, maybe let those two mingle together. Being careful because if I have too much water on my brush, it's going to uh, swish into the blues there. So I don't want that to happen. So I've got a fairly dry brush that I'm using. And now I'm going to introduce a little bit of pink, that Opera Rose by Windsor and Newton. And Bring in some touches of that teal. And how about some of the deeper green mixture with that phthalo? Phthalo green and the burnt orange. Now I am going to flip it back. So I can see what I'm actually painting. I'm gonna do the same over here. Well, that's still got a little moisture, enough moisture in the paper. And it is still wet enough. It's still, it's still got, it doesn't have a sheen, but it's damp. So this pigment being thicker is gonna be okay. As long as the pigment is, and you can see, when I move it around, it's very sluggish. It's pretty thick mixture there on the palette. So I'm okay to put it into damp paper. to do the game of light against dark, dark against light, so we get a nice contrast going. I'm 
Okay, so I do like that. I'm gonna play around with splattering some color. I'm gonna get a little mixture going on this palette of lavender, just pure lavender. I wanna splatter in a little bit here and there where it's still wet. It's a little bit too dry over here probably, but maybe, maybe a little bit is okay. And a little bit of dark. I don't wanna get carried away with this either because your eye can easily get pulled away from the subject if you're doing too much of that. Okay, so this needs to dry, and then um, after it's dried, I want to. I always like to take a step back and stare at it for a minute before moving forward. So I want to do that so I can uh, figure out what I want to do with this foreground area, and then finish off this painting. So let's let this dry. All right, so I like that a lot. I like the, that there's movement in here. So um, next step, I'm gonna come down here and work on, we've got this rock and then there's a little area over here of rockiness. So I've cleaned up my water. I've left some, um, the paint on my palette. So I do wanna use some of the color that I've got here already on the palette. I've got this pink, I wanna use some of that. And I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of the burnt orange. Working in some of that darker color, the brown. Um, and I wanna come under his arm here. It was a little too, I diluted my paint mixture just a little too much that time, so I need to thicken that back up by, whoops, wrong color. Let's soak that up really quick. I wanted the phthalo blue there. And back to my core burnt orange and I'm going to plop in some of that underneath his arm and then we're just going to work that down. I'm going to add a little texture there to my line. Um, adding some of this corally color that I got by mixing the opera pink, or opera rose, excuse me, with the burnt orange by Core. Just a little bit more. That's a nice corally color. And the one I forgot to put on here in this painting that I should have was my Daniel Smith coral. I really like that color. So I'm just gonna add some fun color to this rock as I come down. That little squiggle there is part of his arm. I'm gonna blend those two as if his arm is going underneath. Let's do that, fake it. He's going behind that rock. Maybe not. Maybe I should lift that back out again. Just a little bit. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this 
brownish color under there. Coming in with the lavender, there's some of that really cool lavender in there. Very much just haphazardly, haphazardly carefully planning, <laughs> maybe. Is that a thing? I'm gonna get some of my green here and put a little bit of that in there. And that was my coral, or I mean my um, ultramarine I just mixed with Quinn Gold right up in here. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. So I don't want it too, too bright, but a little bit brighter than what I had there at first. See how that makes that whole arm pop out. A little bit more teal in here. That's a really fun color. A little bit darker in here. And as we come down this rock, I'm gonna add a little bit of water so I can soften that and then come in with some darker as if it were a ledge. It's an alleged ledge. So I'm not minding that, I think that's pretty good. And then we're gonna come, uh, I think I'll clean up my paint here a little bit on the palette and work on this lighter side here. Just can't help myself to add just a little touch of extra green in there. But I wanted a little bit more on the gold side. Okay, so let's let that dry and then we'll work on the uh, other rocks in front of the octopus. Okay, so I've cleaned up my palette and I'm gonna come back in here. And this time I'm gonna add water because I want it to be softer and it's gonna be a lot of light area. And over here, I'll probably get a little bit of darker up in here, there's some shadow. So just starting with damp paper and I should have mixed my color before, but in my head, I know I'm gonna use some of that manganese blue hue, it's manganese nova. I think it's, a, I know it's a Holbein color. Um, some lavender's gonna come into the rock. We're gonna do some cobalt violet light. Pretty much those are the colors we're gonna drop in just here and there again. playing around with drag in the brush. And I think a uh, good point to let this dry and then finishing details coming up. All right, this is dry. <clears throat> to me, this is the fun part. So um, 
there's going to be a few extra little details in here. I'm going to move to a smaller brush. I'm going to go to, um, let's see, probably a number two round if I can find it. A number four long round might work too, but um, I've got my number two long round. And my number two, probably, I'm going to start with the four and keep those other ones on hand because I am coming in with some smaller details. And I want to go back to the mixture of cerulean blue. I'm just going to add it to this little petal and take some of my sodalite. Where did I put that? Um, is this it? I think so. Soda light, just a little bit. So I'm gonna come in and do some of these darker areas. Maybe I'm gonna grab some of this too. Just strengthen some of the contrasting areas here and um, that'll help define the shape of this guy. A little bit of shadowing in here. A little bit of shadowing, not too much in here. And maybe a touch of just shadow under some of these. See, I'm getting a lot more carried away with this than I intended to. It was gonna be much, much simpler, but Sometimes I just can't stick to it. <laughs> I like detail. What can I say? I am a sucker for detail. So I love loose and fluid painting, but some, a lot of me is just my heart is in the detail. And a mixture of both is great when I can pull it off. I love that. So... That's always my aim, is to, to get a good combination, mostly to get a, a painting that says something, that speaks, that has a story. Um, these little guys are fun for me because there are so much detail in them. And you can play around with different um, detail. It's really fun. So I guess I'm not gonna apologize for something that I love to do. So we're just gonna go with that. And come up here, and this is pretty, you know, for the most part dry. Um, not dry paint, but it's very, very, it's not wet. It is very thick, pigmented color. Probably need a little bit more water in it, but um, I'm going to come up in here. And back here, I'm going to start working on his eye. Ooh, he looks like he has a smile. <laughs> That's not going to stay like that. This long round is a little bit trickier to, it's a, you don't have as much control as you do with the shorter round because you've got a lengthier bristle. So I kind of, that's, that's my reason that was swishing like that. And then in here, we've got a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna go with a Naples yellow. Just very, very light. And 
then within his little air hole, I guess it is, is just a touch of shadow with a light edge. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and um, stop the painting part because there is a little bit that I wanna show you that you can do, but this needs to dry for a minute, so hang tight. Okay, so what I wanna do is come back in. I've got this um, Molotow One For All Acrylic White, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna prime that a little bit. And then I want to add a couple of little, just, oh goodness, not quite that much. While it's still wet, I can get that off of there. That was way too much. But I do want to just do a very fine touch there where his eyelid is. A little touch around here. And I can just kind of play around with adding a couple of little fun little spots of white with this marker. And I'll do that over here. Some of it you're not going to be able to see as much. And some of his tin, uh, little suction cups there. A little bit of light area under here. These markers are super fun to play with. So I'm going to add a little bit of white here and white here. And then with the indigo, I can come in and do some fun little squiggly edges. Have those areas kind of pop out a little bit more. It's fun to experiment with this stuff. Don't fret about ruining anything, but you know, here is another thing I can do. Hang tight. I can soften those out a little bit with, maybe it dried really fast. Let's see if I can get it to work. Yes. So that's kind of fun. Try it up here. So don't be afraid to experiment. Just go over that again and then spread that out. And just give a couple of little fun lines here and there.
All right, so I am going to stop for now and take a step back and I'll probably stare at this for a while, not constantly, but I will look at it and analyze it and see if there's anything else I wanna do. I may do some negative painting here and there, but I really like the feel of this and this is just really fun way to paint by you know starting out with the markers and finishing out with the markers. I really like the white one um, too, so I think that adds some pop to it. But um, anyway, you guys, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please hit subscribe. I really appreciate all, all of you who have subscribed already. And if there's anything you want to see, um, how I would approach it, a subject that you kind of wonder, hmm, how, how do I paint that? Go ahead and just leave a comment for me and I'll be looking at those and I'll work on um, if you have an idea or something you want to see me paint. So thanks again. You guys take care. Happy painting and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.